Hey man, yes I bought an Asus Top A50. <laughs> he bought an A50. Doesn't he know it heats up like crazy? Curious ladka, my ass. You actually bought an A15 after hearing how many thermal problems it has. Why? Are you stupid or what? And what if I told you it doesn't heat up like crazy? Let's get started. So everyone has heard that the A15 has terrible thermals and terrible display. So is it really the truth and I decided to make a video about it and you can also check out our previous content on why I chose the A15 which is I didn't think it would be so much popular but it is going up and also I have made a display review which shows that your display worries about this model should not are not uh, very valid or uh, you should not be very concerned about the display of this model so you can check out it right here I have also researched some other YouTubers content like the Tim cut holes in his A15 with a Dremel and it seemed to improve the air circulation a little bit in the machines and including helping a little of the VRM temperatures that provide power to the CPU and uh, Eber had no problems at all and uh, our telegram group the curious ladka YT chat room which has a lot of people now has a multiple people which have RTX 2060 and even 1660 Ti variants of the A15 and they don't have a problem with the thermals. They are reporting that it is well under contained values. So for checking the thermals, I have decided to two tests. One is a stress test and the other is a crisis 2 test. So the reason I am will I will be emphasizing more on the stress test is because when you are playing like for example GTA 5 or any other titles the CPU is not exactly as much hammered as the GPU you are in most cases you are GPU bottlenecked and your CPU is not running at full and maximum load capacity so uh, for in the stress test scenario your CPU and GPU are getting hammered at the same time so you will have 100% CPU usage as well as GPU usage which is the absolute worst case scenario for a thermal solution in any computer or even a gaming notebook. That's why I'm focusing more on the stress test as uh, when playing games that uh, CPU you might see that it is hovering sometimes at around 30% or even 50% and the 4600H is a very powerful gaming CPU and even productivity workload. So uh, let's get started for the stress test. I will show you how I did that and uh, my explanation will follow. So now the environmental conditions while performing all these tests were at 28 degrees ambient temperature of room and uh, the laptop was sitting on table with the two sides airflow left and right were open while the back side was a little constricted just like uh, as you can see here. So the backside is a little constricted. There is almost uh, six to seven centimeters of space between the back, and there are no additional modifications or Ryzen controller or cooling pads. Nothing is used. It is just the out of box experience with the turbo mode enabled at the max and the power adapter plugged in. Now let's just try to run the stress test. Now I am using the Ada 64 for the CPU only stress test and it's a countdown timer with all the metrics so let's just start the processor is at 3.9 gigahertz and upwards with 100% utilization i've seen that this uh, a15 uh, with 4600h gets up to 35 or 31 uh, I've mostly seen the 31 watts uh, mark and uh, here are the SSD temperatures we are gonna be monitoring them to see if they are not getting too hot because that may affect longevity and uh, GPU as you can see is it's not reporting the current metrics now but it is like 59 degrees because uh, right now 1650 is not getting used and uh, the displays being run by the internal Vega graphics. So as you can now hear, the fans are loud, but not that too loud. I don't have any complaints about the noise levels. 
as you can see stability test cpu usage 100 percent and it has been just uh, one minute 40 seconds so now it has been almost five minutes and cpu is at 100 percent utilization let's check the parameters so uh the Ryzen 5 has been 4600H has been running continuously on 3.96 GHz with 100% utilization. Memory clocks are 1600 MHz. Don't worry, the memory clocks are shown as divided by 2, so it's running at around 3200 MHz. The CPU power, uh, CPU temperature at package has been around 86 degrees currently with the uh, maximum reaching 90.5 and as you can see the cpu package power has been at 36 watts like 4600h has been limited to 35 watts and has there has been no thermal throttling yet and uh, regarding the gp uh, ssd temperature the wdcpc sn530 it is at 44 degrees currently and maximum has been reached to 51 degrees so that's not too bad and uh, regarding uh, the HDD, I am pretty sure it has been uh, reporting a wrong temperature. And regarding the SSD, 50 degrees is very respectable. There is absolutely nothing wrong with the SSD going 50 degrees and even 55 degrees. So, CPU stress test has been running fine. And now, let's switch to GPU plus CPU test uh, stress test, which is the absolute worst case scenario. After 15 minutes of starting the CPU stress test and 10 minutes for the GPU, let's see. The CPU is at 3.5 GHz which is well above its base clock of 3 GHz and earlier when only the CPU stress test was running it was at 3.96 GHz but now it is at 3.5. Talking about the temperatures, the Ryzen 5 4600H can pa handle a package temperature of 105 degrees Celsius. So, in this absolute worst case scenario, when there is a Unigen Heaven benchmark running and a full on CPU stress test is also running, this is the CPU temperature that we got. At package, it reached 95 degrees Celsius, which is well below the 105 degrees that is mentioned for the 4600H. Now, Intel i5 series 9300H reaches well above 98 degrees Celsius in our Lenovo Wi-Fi 40 before undervolting. Now I haven't even touched upon the Ryzen controller utility yet and 95 degrees seems respectable and the maximum it has gone is 95.8. CPU core as you can see all the values are mentioned here and the CPU power has been at uh, 24 watts. So uh, when it was running at CPU, just CPU only, it was at around 32 watts. Now it has dropped to 25. Now talking about the 1650, maximum 79 degrees and average is 77 degrees. And it has been running continuously at 50 watts, which is the maximum power that is allowed for the 1650. With the GPU clock, 1695 megahertz and memory is at 1530. Now, uh, if you can see here the performance limit, then uh, power is, has been an issue for the 1650 in this laptop because it's at 1650. So the only thing limiting the 1650 right now to boost higher or perform better is the power. Thermal has not been the case. As you can see here, the performance limit thermals are, no, uh, it has not been thermally throttled in this stress test. Talking about the CPU, CPU has also been not thermally throt throttling because it is running well above its base clock of 3 GHz, which is very respectable I say. Also talking about the ramp down temperatures, like how much, how long does it take for the laptop to cool down once you are done with your tasks. So in my case, I noticed that uh, if the CPU is at 90 plus degrees Celsius and you just stop the workload, then it takes around one and a uh, one to two minutes to reach very safe temperatures like 50 to 60 degrees. So uh, I would suggest that if you are doing some very heavy tasks, then you should allow your CPU to and CPU and GPU and internal components to reach down a safe temperature before shutting down your machine because it prolongs the life and longevity of the components. Because as if you shut down your machine as 
instantly when you are done then the fan stop and your tem the temperatures inside the chassis of your machine takes a little longer to dissipate into the environment so there is an advice now talking about the GTA 5 and Crisis 2 benchmark I took these screenshots while playing and the CPU seemed to reach 95 to 96.5 degrees Celsius and the GPU seemed to reach 78 to 79 degrees Celsius and that's on the turbo mode fan profile and no overclocks or underclocks applied to the GPU or CPU either so this is uh, what you're seeing here is like the stock scenario the worst that you can expect and obviously you can lower the temperatures by the Ryzen controller or slightly underclocking a GPU like uh, 25 to 50 megahertz because Nvidia GPUs overclock themselves up to a certain temperature limit so the options are on the table and we can always take them but the temperatures out of the box temperatures that are stock are just as fine for the bu uh, budget gaming laptop so I don't think we need to worry about the temperature or longevity of the laptop because of the higher temperature uh, that the laptop seems to have. Now one of the one of my future videos will be the Ryzen controller which is supposedly like uh, undervolting works for Intel based chips. With a very minimal performance loss then you can very much limit your higher temperatures in the CPU. Like uh, you can also limit your CPU to like 80 degrees Celsius which is very safe and uh, very cool. Stay tuned for that. Conclusion time. So if as you saw that the thermals are not of a problem now in the A15 like every gaming laptop gets hot and uh, if you compare it with the intel based chips so <clears throat> intel might be cooler but it is also underperforming by a lot like 4600 h even beats intel 10750h so bear that in mind before comparing thermals like uh, you can't compare a ferrari with a maruti 800 i don't know that's a bad analogy but the chip is very powerful and 90 to 95 degrees doesn't seem like a lot if the chip can handle 105 and intel based chips they can handle only 100 and they still go up to 96 97 and even 98 like in our legion wi-fi 40 so you don't need to worry join our telegram ask people there they have the even the variants with the rtx 2060 4900h they don't seem to have a problem with the a50 and they are happy people who took our advice and bought the machine and i'm not uh, asking you to trust me blindly but uh, have a thought Subscribe and ask your questions in the comments and we'll catch you next time.